I'll have to say who said it, uh, because usually if you have the question, somebody else does too, but you took the time um, to ask it. And that's what's nice about these Zoom um, paying along with me, because you can ask the question and you will be able to uh, get it answered live. So if you do miss something, you can try to catch it on YouTube later this afternoon or tomorrow. Um, if I'm going too fast, or maybe you just work at a different pace than me, there's no right or wrong in art. It's just about having fun and experimenting and exploring what your creativity is all about. So we are doing a Saguaro today and we're gonna go way up close. So um, this is fun because uh, I never get this close to them. They've got all those little thorns on there. And um, the one time that one of my family members did get up close, it was not a pleasant experience. So it's nice to kind of explore something uh, that you typically can't get too close to and wonder what all's going on. So this happens to be part of a Saguaro. Just imagine that it has a round top somewhere close to the sky and imagine that it's sitting into the ground. So we're taking like a midsection of the actual saguaro. And then we're gonna paint a few thistles on top. I mean, just to add some color, who doesn't like pink and green? They go together. It's kind of a, an 80s, 90s things, but it's kind of fun to put pink and green together. Um, this happens to be the sky. So if you were wondering what this little sliver is, so that just adds a little more asymmetrical dimension to our painting. So here's the sky, here's the up close of the Saguaro, and these are the little thistles that got stuck to it, or maybe they're in front. Um, there's all kinds of things that get stuck to cacti, right? Yeah, paper bags, plastic bags, um, all kinds of stuff. All right, so what do you need? You should have a canvas, right? It doesn't have to be, um, wrapped around the edges. It could just be a board. It could be a piece of cardboard. You know, I even have a piece of um, a canvas that I just painted over this morning that my sister had given me and it just needed new light. So I'll be using that one on the next uh, painting lesson. And you'll need some brushes. You will need to have a round, feels like a makeup brush. You don't have to have that, but it just feels like it's, um, going to make the details a lot easier. And then you're going to, you could have a rough bristly brush. Feels like pig's hair, you know, it's just kind of coarse. And that's what we're going to start out with because it holds more paint as we go along. That's really all you need. I mean, if you have the tinier ones, maybe you could use those for your little thorns. Uh, that would be fine. Paint, what do you got in paint? Woo, let me show you what I got. I just have the primaries and you're like, well, how is that going to translate into green? So color mixing, it's all about color mixing. It's not about having you go to the store and get every color of paint. We can make green, we can make purple, we can make pink with red, white, blue, and yellow. Okay, what else? You need a yucky cup of water, not the one you're drinking out of. And so I always give myself this ugly blue one so I don't get confused. I go over all these at the beginning so you don't have to run around later and find everything. And napkins, get some napkins handy because you might make a spill or you need to blot something and you need to clean your brushes. So, and I'll show you how to clean your brushes. I also keep a little spray bottle handy. It's not necessary, it wasn't on the list. Don't worry about it. Speaking of the list, going forward, you'll be able to order the supplies from me ahead of time and pick them up or you can have them shipped to you. So I'll talk about that later too. This is so fun. I'm really excited to bring this to you today and we're gonna get started right now. Okay, so we're gonna paint the background. I'm gonna uncover it. I always cover my paint um, if I don't, if I pour it ahead of time, like I poured it before class and then I can cover it. I can even put it into a baggie like this little gallon baggie and slip it into the fridge and it'll last all week. Just make sure people know it's not mustard and ketchup in there, right? So just label it as paint and it will keep because not all of us are going to get done or maybe we have to chime out for just a bit. All right, so we're going to paint. We're not going to draw. We're just going to start painting today and I'm going to make up some sky blue. 
So I'm taking a little white and I'm taking a little blue. All right. And that's going to be on the right side of my canvas. And you know what? I'm going to use my hog's hair brush because it holds more paint. I'm going to go right down the side. Now you see I have two canvases sitting here up, up next to one another. And it almost looks like I have this extension going on here. I'm looking at this one, doesn't matter which one you look at, but don't look at the giraffe, that's another class. That's just there so that you, you can get excited about another class. All right. We're gonna go down the side here, maybe make it about three inches, depending on the size of your canvas. If you're working on an eight by 10, like this one, maybe it's only two inches, maybe it's only an inch and a half, it just depends on the size of your canvas. I'm working larger so you can see it. That's the only reason I have a larger canvas. Now, does it need to be a solid blue? No. You want it to be this really um, beautiful sky. Typically, I paint sky in the way that air flows, but this is a linear orientation. This is totally uh, the, about the saguaro. This is just happens to be a little side note. Literally, it's a side note over here on the side. So I'm just making some blue. I, it's got a little white streaks in there. Maybe you want the edge to be a little bit darker for fun. So I could put some royal blue right along the edge. It's not really royal blue, it's phyllo blue. That's the most common blue you'll find in the store. Your blue might be cobalt, ultramarine, doesn't really matter. Wow, okay. So there's my sliver of sky, right? Okay, so all of this is gonna be my cacti. And we're gonna make up some green. I'm gonna make my sky just a bit, tad bit. Okay, so all this is gonna be green. How do we make green? That's gonna be fun, right? So I'm gonna take yellow and blue. It's that simple yellow and blue. And I just mix it right here on my foam plate. I do have a wooden palette board that looks all professional and everything, but I hate cleaning it. So I just use the plates. Plus I can keep these as a record later, right? They just dry up and then I, I can say, oh, this was my Saguaro cactus. It's what I used on it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start painting some green all over this area. And look, I like how it's kind of streaky. Please paint in the direction that the swirl grows. Just like I said, you would paint sky in the way it flows. You paint nature in the way it grows. So that means up and down. If you start going like this, it's, it's just going to look weird at the end. So we don't want any weird paintings. Oh, maybe you do want weird. There's times for weird paintings. Yesterday, I had students in class making surrealism. And yes, our tigers were on the beach. There was no camouflaging going on there. And their mouths were wide open and it was so fun. So speaking of camouflage, so uh, one of the upcoming classes in October will be the giraffe. And we will work on that together, doing a full body animal that we haven't done yet. And it will be fun to um, explore how we can camouflage him from all those uh, Serengeti animals. Like the lion. We've been doing botanicals this month, if you haven't guessed. Last, um, or last week we did a prickly hair. For those of you who missed it, you can catch it on YouTube. It was really fun. I love these live sessions though with you through Zoom, because I get to see your work at the end if you want to share it. You can ask me questions. So there is an advantage to doing it with me. Plus, I feel like you get more committed knowing that 
oh my gosh, okay, it's nine o'clock, gotta do it, right? And you know it's just sitting out there on YouTube sometimes, you don't quite tune in. I know I don't, but I, I know it's there, but I just don't take the time to do it. So mark your calendar. The next one will be September the 10th, right after Labor Day. And you'll have time to go to my Etsy shop if you need to buy some supplies. So you have everything to do the project. Or you just keep using what you have. If you're like me, I'm running out. So I need to get some new stuff. Maybe you just don't have time with school starting back to go and run around and get a new canvas. Okay, so look, I filled up the whole thing. If you want to do the edges, you know, if you want to go down the edge, sometimes I do that because I know I'm not going to be framing it anytime soon. And I know that um, I can just prop it up on the mantle of the fireplace and just enjoy it right away. And it doesn't look unfinished. Some people paint the whole thing black on the edge, but I just like to extend the painting to the edges. So you can take the time to do that after we're done and finish those edges, all right? You would do the same thing up here. You would just take the sky around the three edges. Yeah, pretty fun. Okay, so look, already it looks like I have the start of something growing. Could be a beanstalk, not sure, but we're gonna turn it into a cacti because we're gonna have all these fun little thorns on there. Okay, so with greens, or you can make several different greens. Green, like I told you, was a mix of your yellow and blue. Well, to make this successful and to make it look more dimensional, we need to make two more greens. How do we do that? Well, find another plate. So I got another one. You can use the same one. You could try to just move a little blue over here, a little more yellow over here, mix some up. But I am going to switch real quick over here to this plate. Ooh, I already got a blue green, right? That just means I have more blue than yellow. That's all it is. So that's a good color. Might need that one in somewhere in my cactus. How about this mossy green? How am I gonna make the mossy green? Hmm. Well, let's try that. A little bit of yellow. Don't you feel like a chemist today? Early morning. I'm so glad y'all got up to paint with me. And it's probably not early if some of you are joining me on the uh, East Coast or across the pond. It's probably evening there, but I'm glad that you're joining me today. And I am, I've had my cup of coffee, but I'm enjoying more of this with you today. It's not too early. Okay, so I have that green that I started with, but if I add a little white to it, Guess what? I get a lighter green. All right, so now I've got two new greens. Yeah, two new greens. I'll get it up close so you can see it. Okay, now let's make another one. Hmm, so more yellow. Oh yeah, we gotta make that mossy green. This time I'm gonna put a tad of red into it. When I say a tad, I mean just a little bit of red. Kind of looking brown, but it's getting mossy. Maybe I'll just use a tad of blue in there just so I can get that yucky swamp green. Okay, so now I have those three in my arsenal here. So that's fun, isn't it? I love it. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna start now making little, what I call one inch Strips. Because if you look at the saguaro up close, which don't get too close, you will see that it undulates. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. So I'm going to do, let's say that I want to do strip number one with my brush. I'm just going to paint a, a mossy green stripe right there. Yeah. And maybe I'll skip over one, two, and now I've got another strip stripe. You do not have to measure this. Just, just have fun making stripes. Maybe in between those two, 
I'm going to have more, but my paint's already dried up a little bit that I made here. I have kind of a lemony, lemon yellowy green right next to it. And then over here, I might have a dark green next to it. So I want to create dimension. I've got stripes. I'm starting, and you could do a pattern. So you could start over and do the mossy green. I got to keep making up more. Mine's drying up so fast in this heat, in this Arizona heat. Doesn't have to match exactly when you remix it. Just creating all these stripes. Now I'm using a big fat brush, so it's almost, an, I think my tip of my brush is a one inch. The bigger your brush, of course, relates to how big your canvas is. You wouldn't want to use this on a bigger canvas because your stripes would be really big, maybe. Maybe you just have a half inch brush. So if you have more than three greens, that's awesome. Okay, so we're making this little stripe going on. Pretty easy, huh? It's pretty easy to make the stripes. I love it when you can walk it through step by step and just talk to yourself about shape. Anyone can draw if you can talk to yourself that it's a line or a shape. In this case, the lines make the stripes and that's easy to do and they're just these elongated rectangles. You can paint. So yes, I talk to myself a lot. I'm like, oh, I can draw that. I can draw a line. I can draw. And in nature, nothing is straight. So these should not be straight. If you find something in nature straight, let me know, because I don't think so. Only the straight lines are the man-made. All right, I'm gonna add a little more pop of yellow. If your yellow is not popping the way you want it, it's because yellow is translucent. It's one of those colors that just does not take on the first pass. So you're gonna to have to let that dry and then come back and put some more yellow over your, your lime yellowy green color that you made. You can also mix white with yellow and it will help it become more opaque. It's just the nature of the color. All the colors can be found on your periodic chart. So if you've just started school and you wanna get really smart, pull out a chart and you will find sulfur, yellow. You'll find cobalt for blue. You'll find titanium for white. You'll find all these things that are made in nature and it's fascinating to me. So I'm just going to rub some yellow back over my first pass to get that to stand out. I'm going to put a little white with my yellow to make that lemon yellow to help with my transparency issues. So now it's a little more opaque. I love too that it's starting. I don't have to get it totally smooth. I can have little dibs and dabs and things that don't quite make sense. I don't like it really smooth. Your style, you might like things really smooth, and that's okay. You're the artist here. Okay, I've changed brushes now, and I'm using my round sable brush that feels like a makeup brush. Sometimes I call it a synthetic, so it feels like horse hair, but it's not, it, it may not really be. Although they do make brushes out of horse hair all those horses you have to brush every day that you do something with the hair. Okay, so I'm using this because it's round and I'm gonna be able to twirl my hand because remember I told you it doesn't hold much paint. So I'm gonna dip it into my lemony yellow here and I am gonna hold it and I'm gonna twirl my wrist so I can get all the paint off the entire brush. 
and I didn't have to double dip, right? I mean, you can double dip, but I didn't have to. So that's kind of just a little trick. So I'm gonna try it again. Let me try it over here because I need a little more pop of yellowy white over here. I didn't wait for it to dry, by the way. I'm painting wet on wet. We don't need to wait for it to dry. If you're working in watercolor this morning, you might need to let something dry, right? Before you'd go and make it a darker layer. You could work in pastels. You could do this project again in a medium you like. Cool. All right, I'm gonna get some grassy green back because I really want some of that. I am really just dirtying up the cactus with different colors. I might, I might make some more of that teal, that dark, dark blue. He's coming to life, isn't he? Okay, so to make teal, tiny bit of yellow, mostly blue. I could really make it teal by adding white. It makes that, that color. And I think I could put a little of that in there to brighten it up. Wow. Now you want to get up close to him. You want to check him out. So yeah, I have a funny story. Um, yeah, we went hiking at the White Tanks and my daughter decided she'd get really close to it. Yeah, well, that was not a pretty day. Do not get that close to them. <laughs> and we had just moved here. Oh my gosh. And you know, the only saguaros exist here in Arizona. They do not exist in other places. Unless she planted them. Kind of a cool fact. All right. Okay, so I've got, I really have now several different shades of green. The first pass was just the three greens. Now I was using my round brush to go back over and give a second coat and give it a little more definition. I think now I'd like to just use some white. I'm gonna dip into the white. I'm not even cleaning my brush. I don't think that's necessary, but I really want to create some white stripes, really skinny stripes. I can't wait to see yours. I bet it's, they, they're gonna look fabulous. You can tell what happens when you have a whole bunch of them and you stack them up. You really could make one ginormous display of them. Maybe if there's a way for us to do that on the gallery page that the city has, um, put together. That would be fun to make a giant one. Stack them up. Okay, let's see. So I've got some white there. I've got some here. Maybe put a little white straight right here. I'm just twisting my arm. Yeah. So that bright white really um, helps me see where the light is being captured so the sunlight might be hitting the tiny edge of that swirl sticking out. So if I, when I say sticking out, if you study the swirl close, you know that if it's round, if you're looking down on it, it actually goes in and out like this. Like if you were to cut through it like a sliced piece of watermelon, it does that. So you're painting this side and you're painting this side and you're painting that's got skinny little um, tip of the white where the white is capturing the sunlight. Okay, so it's undulating. Yes. Say that five times. I don't know how to say that five times. Undulating, undulating, blah, blah, blah. Not on a Saturday morning. Okay. So I did clean my brush. How do you clean a brush? Woohoo! You do not squeeze the hair. 
like I just did. You dip it into the water. You squish it around. And you go back and forth on your napkin until it comes clean. If you pull on the hair like that, then you are going to uh, cause the hair to come out of the metal part. And then you gotta go buy a new brush. And brushes are not cheap, so you need to take care of them as best you can. Now, obviously, if I kept dipping it in my gross, dirty water, then it's not gonna come clean. So you have to get a fresh little thing of water it comes clean. Okay, it doesn't need to be that clean for today, but that's how you clean it. All right, so I've got the barrel, I got the sky, and now I'm ready to start on my thorns, these really cool thorns. So um, I have a stem, you see the stem coming from the bottom left going across the page. So basically I'm wanting in my composition to break it up. Right now, everything is linear. So I don't think I want my thorns going linear too. I think that just needs a little bit of a surprise. And that's why I'm gonna go at an angle across the page. If you are kind of a straight up kind of person, then you can just go straight up and down. I, the reason I went like this is because I wanted to add a little um, whimsy to it and my thorns are going crisscross. So, I have two things going on. I have a linear background and I have crisscrossing going on in the foreground. So that's why that's going this direction. And then I'm going to crisscross the other direction for this thistle. Okay. So this, I have one, two, three, four thistles. Typically I use odd numbers. That's just a really good rule of thumb in art. Uh, so I think that what I've created here by this little triangle shape here almost might be my fifth object because you're entering the canvas right here and you're traveling up the barrel. Those are for you more advanced people. That's just explaining to you a little bit about your um, composition and you would know what I'm talking about. But for those of you who've never heard that, you'll look at something and go, why do I like it so much? Well, it's because you're thinking about composing. Just like a piece of music, you need a bass, you need a, you know, a treble, you need the big crescendo. So there's reasons you do different things in art. Okay, I think I've talked long enough that I think this is getting a little dry so I can draw over the top. And I'm gonna get started with drawing the lines and then I'm gonna let um, Rosie speak in just a minute here. So I'm gonna take my color palette that had all the colors and I'm going to make a brown. How do you make brown? Red, yellow, and blue. All of the primaries, believe it or not, make brown. If you put too much of one or the other, you'll go, oh no, I don't have brown. What do I do? It just means you need to keep on working at it till you get the brown. Put a little more red, put a little more yellow. Maybe you had too much blue and you got green, right? So I have a pretty pretty brown. I don't have to go buy brown. If I want a light brown, I can add white to it. I don't want a light brown right now. I want the dark brown, right? So I'm gonna start at the bottom of the canvas and I'm gonna go crisscross applesauce all the way across with my sable brush. I'm drawing. I could twist if I need to because I ran out of paint. And I'm going to stop about right there. So there's line number one. Okay, I don't even care that I didn't have enough paint right there. It's going to get filled in later, so I'm not really worried about that. Okay, I'm going to crisscross this way. Ooh, I made a triangle at the bottom. Ta-da! Okay, so there, like X marks the spot, right? I got a little triangle. This is where I'm gonna enter the painting. There's gonna be a nice little thistle right there. Okay. I don't know what the scientific name is for those thistles. If you find out, let me know what those are. That would be fun to know. Okay, now I'm gonna create something else coming off the middle of the X. I'm gonna make another just fun one that had no bloom. So now it looks looking like a TP. <laughs> I think these are fun to see what you draw. 
Okay, now how, let, let's put one up here that's trying to reach. So I'll just do an L shape. Oh, there's an L. Talk to yourself. Is it a TP? Is it an L? Talk to yourself. Nobody's listening anyway. Nobody ever listens to me when I'm talking to myself. So. Okay, now from about, oh, let's say a third down from your canvas or let's say two thirds up on your stem. Let's make a little short V shape right there, yes. And let's make another, oh, see, I got a little V. And maybe for grins, we'll have just a little baby one coming off right here halfway. And maybe for grins, we'll pick make another little V shape right here. Okay, you can add as many of these little walking sticks as you want. But now we have a plan. We got a plan. We know we're gonna put one here, one here, one here, and one here. All right, I'm gonna mix up some pink. I'll show you how to do some pink. So I've got red, I've got white. So I'm gonna make some pink. We're just gonna make this little base color and then um, we'll take a little break and let Rosie talk to you a bit. Okay, here we go. So I have the top here. So this is gonna be circle number one. I don't even care if I get some green in my circle because we're gonna come back and do some fun stuff. So this is gonna be number one, number two, And let's make this up some more paint. Number three. And number four. Okay, I got a plan. Okay, I'll let Miss Rose speak for a second. And she's gonna tell you about how you can donate to my um, artist profession for my time and supplies and putting together all of this. And for you guys, cause we got some exciting things coming up. And by no means, it's not necessary. And then she's gonna tell you about the gallery. And then I have some exciting stuff to tell you too. So I'll let her speak for a minute. And you keep, keep planning where your stems are and working on your thistles. All right. So um, I have been sending out and an, I have been sending out emails rather than linking them in the chat box. Um, and I find that a lot easier, but if you would like for me to um, put them in the chat box, I can definitely do that. And I'm talking about um, Deborah's tip links. So what we do is that, what I do is that I link Deborah's tipping links um, in the chat box or in a separate email. And those tipping links will direct you to her, um, tip platforms such as PayPal, Venmo, um, she has a Bravo link. And so um, we, I just add those in because she has been so great. Um, she has helped us with these, pro with this program through the, from the beginning of the pandemic and she's going all the way through November. So she is just really putting a lot of time and effort into these classes. And um, she uses those donations for supplies and to help um, get all of the things she needs to keep hosting these wonderful classes for us. So um, those will be linked in an email. Like I said, if you do decide that you'd like for me to link them here in the chat, I can definitely do that. I also link a survey on there and um, you'll see our virtual exhibit. So I have been changing the art, uh, rotating the art and I will just choose um, artwork that we don't have a lot of. So if I receive five prickly pears and um, only two saguaros, I'm more, more than likely going to choose one out of those. So um, 
but that I hope that doesn't discourage you from sending them in. Uh, please keep sending those in because if we do have an older artwork, art piece on there, I will use the newer pieces. Um, so definitely send those in. They've been looking so great. Um, that virtual gallery is beautiful. And I will also add that into the email. Um, so thank you so much, Deborah, for being here this morning, as well as all of our participants. It's from what I can see on my end, it's looking so great so far. So I can't wait to see the finished product. Thank you so much, Rosie. I appreciate that. Um, and I want to thank the City of Goodyear for allowing me to partner with them and bring these uh, programs to you during this time. It did start as, um, you know, when all my stuff came to a stop, what am I going to do? I can't go meet you in person. And I'm so grateful that they were willing to work with me uh, to bring these programs to you. So thank you. Thank you so much for um, patronizing me and chiming in with me today. I really appreciate that. Okay, so my other exciting news is if you didn't have everything you needed today and you were ready to do our upcoming project on September 10th, um, you can go to my Etsy site, which we will have that available for you and you will be able to just order the supplies for pickup. You can pick them up or there's a separate fee if you want to mail to you. And I'll tell you at the end like what's in the bag and what you get for all that. Okay, so let's keep going. Because we're back to our saguaro. I'm going to mix some red and yellow again. I mean, not yellow, white. And I remember I told you I like to paint things in the way the direction that they grow. So I'm going to start at the middle of my thistle here. And I'm just going to start making some little soldier lines that go like your spokes on a wheel, right? From the center going out. I want to make this thistle look like he is thorny or growing thorns from the center. Thistles are not the easiest thing. Like if they get stuck to yourself, they're not fun to pick off either. So I want them to be kind of spiky. That's why I'm doing these little simple strokes from the center of our little pink blobs that we did right before the break, okay? So I'm starting at the center and just doing this another round of pink. It's okay if I've got more red on my brush or more white, because I kind of like that. I kind of like that there's a little bit more red and a little bit more white. So I'll put this up close to you so that you can see. And you can see that I'm just going from the center pulling out. You can also see that I scratched. For those of you who want to scratch, you could take the other end of your paintbrush and scratch the paint. Because that kind of makes it more thistly, right? Or more thorny, yeah? All right. It only works if the paint's wet. You can't scratch it afterwards. Well, you could scratch paint. You could put a hole in your whole painting. Don't do that, though. Don't store it in the garage where nobody sees it. Okay, so I'm just making these look kind of more three-dimensional by going around each of the blooms. This is my third time around. For those of you who are counting, I really wasn't counting. I'm making that up. This is just my second time around. I think it just adds color, you know, to an otherwise just a green barrel. There's always stuff that gets stuck to these barrels, swallows, you know, and the cactus wren are making their dens in there, and then the woodpeckers are kicking them out. And well, there's just a lot of stuff going on on these things, on these cacti, and we're just adding a little color to the what's in front of it, maybe. That'll be another lesson. We'll have to do our cactus wren. That would be And for those of you who are, aren't from this area, at least you're learning a little bit more about the Sonoran Desert, what all we have. Okay, so there's, there's my um, thistles. Now, you, you notice that there's some darkness going on here too. So I'm gonna wait just a bit and I'm gonna show you how I made kind of a maroonish color, uh, which is just the darker pink, like a red violet. 
so I could get some shade and shadow in that thistle, but I'm gonna wait a little bit. Let's go back to the stems, okay? So I'm gonna go back to my brown. I'm gonna put just another coat of brown on there. Just tracing my lines, that's all I'm doing. This is an easy part, tracing what you already have there. I'm thickening up, I'm not thickening the line, but I'm the paint is becoming thicker because I'm putting a second coat on there. Oh, I got some pink in that one, that's okay. Nothing is solid color anyway. So we're gonna be taking these stems and also giving them two more colors. So they don't look so flat. Twisting my, my wrist. Wow, okay, that's really cool. So I've got, they got them all deeper, but now I'm going to actually lighten them. So I hope I got enough white left here. I'm gonna take some white. So I have to figure out where Mr. Sun is. Where is my sun? I'm gonna choose that my sun is over my head over here because that's where the light from my window is coming forth. So the left side of my stem is going to get a tiny white sliver all the way down its stalk. Do you see that? That's fun. See, now the stem is becoming three-dimensional. This is how you change it from flat cave art to uh, something from the 21st century here. Actually, when the Renaissance came on, they were really exploring how to make things three-dimensional and did some fabulous work. Oh, wow. Okay, so everything on the left side is getting a little bright light of white. Now, this one is kind of horizontal, so I'm just gonna put it on the tip of it because that's where the, the sun would hit it. Same thing up here, it's gonna hit the top of this little L and it's gonna hit the side of the L. So just think about where your sun is. Where is he? If it's overhead, then you might have it more toward the center of your stem or at the tips of your stem. If it's coming from the right, you would have done the opposite of what I did. Right. Now, believe it or not, I'm going to put a little green into the stem on the opposite side. I'm gonna go back to my green plate over here, see if I got anything left. I don't have a whole lot left. I might have to make up just a little bit more, just a tad. I don't need a whole lot to make the left side stand out a little more. Because I don't want my thistle, I mean, my thistle's not really, really brown, 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 too brown. I want it to have a little bit of green to it. So oh, that's a little too dark. So if your value, if your green is too close to your brown, you need to lighten it up with a little more yellow or white. It, it is growing, so I want it to have a little bit of green in it. Not be such a dead thing. Everything feels dead right now in the heat we're experiencing. <laughs> I I just, like, how could anything be growing out there? But it is. It is. It stores up. The soror stores up water during the monsoon seasons or rainy seasons around the winter time and that way it can survive kind of like our bodies i think mine's storing up fat a lot too much <laughs> for a rainy day <laughs> Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit of light on one side. We're gonna do some shadows too that are casted onto the tour. But now it's feeling more dimensional in that regard, now that I have that done. Okay, let's go to the, th we're gonna get to be thorn happy now. Yay, thorns. 
Let's do some thorns. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my brown. How do I make brown? Yellow, red, and blue. I need a lot more red in there. Okay, so I'm gonna make some thorns. The thorns, I'm just gonna go down. I'm gonna go one, two, I'm gonna make three, four. I'm going to make five rows of X's. And once you get hmm, maybe half a dozen, dozen of them down, then you'll, you'll be, you'll just be marching along with all of your little X. Okay. So I'm going to start over here on the edge where I know it's mostly dry and I'm going to start my little row. So I'm going to have one, two, three. So see how I'm just going at an angle. I want them to overlap into the sky because you can see those thorns on the edge of the swirl. Remember, this is three dimensional. It's round. So I want to see the thorns sticking into the sky area. Oh, fun. See, I'm just marching along. That's in one direction, not the band. I know not that dates myself. I don't even really know when they actually came out. Okay, so those are going into the sky. And now I'm going to go in the opposite direction, making X's, not O's, making X's. Fun. I'm barely touching the canvas. I barely have any paint on the canvas, just enough to make a tiny line. See, you don't have to have a small brush for this. You can use these bigger brushes. It's just about, about how much pressure you're putting. If you press really hard, like this, pressing really hard, you're gonna get a fat line. But if, you, if you're very gentle, you're gonna get a thin line. So it's just about how much pressure you're adding to the painting. Okay, I'm gonna skip over and maybe put some, maybe this is a good line right here. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so forth and so on. I'm gonna march down the barrel. Don't worry, I'm gonna go the other direction in a minute. See, it's coming to life. All, all these little details matter. In fact, they matter a lot. There's reasons for the reasons that our creator put all these really cool thorns. And you'll find the thorns right at that that ridge where I did the little drawing for you. So you'll find them on those tips as it's sticking out because uh, it keeps predators and other key things away from it. So they're placed in a really unique spot. Unique to this. All right, let's go over another three inches. This looks like a good spot to make a ridge of thorns. I love this. I love that we can emulate creation, celebrate it, study it. It's it, part of this is just studying it, you know, and appreciating everything about it. As you paint it, you can be thinking about that because you're obviously looking at a picture. Once you've done this enough, you have a you have me memory of it. Go outside, take photographs, uh, keep a folder on your computer of all the, you could keep all your cactus in one folder, cacti, excuse me, and your animals in a folder and study them, bring them out from time to time and look at them. All right, I'm going to go another row over, make some more soldiers. I can't wait to see yours. I hope you'll share it with me in the last five minutes of class time. Okay, I'm just marching along here. And I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. I can go pretty fast now. On my second pass, when I crisscross, because I already got the first one done. I don't have any questions this morning. I don't know what, everybody's busy. They're all busy. 
Okay, so I'm, I've got I've got my first pass, but guess what? I'm gonna do a second coat, but it's gonna be a different color. I wanna have them glistening in the sun, so I'm gonna use white this time. And I'm out of white, so I gotta add more white onto my palette. I'll put it right here next to my pink. Clean off my brush just a tad. And I'm gonna go back to the first row and do it again. But this time I'm only gonna do one side only. And make them, see they look more dimensional that way. When you add a second color or second coat, not so flat. We're almost getting there. We just have some shadows to do. You probably have a smaller canvas, so this isn't taking you as long to do this many forms. Oh, I'd hate to come up against these things. Picking them out of a screaming two-year-old is not fun. Okay, oh, maybe a few of them will go the other direction. I'm feeling like these need a little crossings. You know, you're the artist. You can look around your painting and see where it might need a little more oomph, a little more pizzazz. You know, if you needed to add some yellow thorns or something in there, you, you get to decide, right? You can look at it and say, oh, I got a gap right here. I need to add some more. I didn't measure anything. Nothing here's measured. Okay, now I'm gonna make some fun little dots and dashes along my stem with the brown. Just for fun, I'm gonna put a couple of little, so it looks kind of thorny along the stem. I'm just kind of dabbing at it. Do, 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 do. Nothing special about it, just dabbing at it making it have texture. I'm just giving it a little texture. So it doesn't look like you could just pick it up, take it home. There's something going on there. Okay, so now my, my thistles have everything. Let's just mix up some purple. How do you do that? We haven't done any purple yet. I love purple shadows. Um, Purple has blue and red in it made up to make purple. So you're kind of getting that blue from the sky reflection and red from the, the warmth of light. And I just think it makes a great shadow color. Not all artists do that. You know, they'll use the opposites. They might use, um, since this is green, they'll mix red and green together to do their shadows. So. Everybody's a little different. So I'm taking a little blue, a little red. I had a little, <laughs> little spot left on my palette right there. So I'm making a little purple. Okay. Now the trick with this is going to be not to make a solid purple. I want to make sure that it's transparent. So I'm just going to dab it onto my napkin so that it doesn't, I'm not doing a real solid purple. All right, so I'm going to put it over, put the purple around the thistle because it's casting a shadow onto the saguaro. So this is the right side with, because remember Mr. Sun is over here, Mr. Sun. So my shadow needs to be on the right side. And I'm going to do that around each one. And I'm doing it the way it would grow, remember, because got to emulate what it's what's casting the shadow right so it's got to be kind of uh spokes on the wheel and thorny just like the thistle don't just do a big c shape well you could I and mean, you can if you want to right so i'm going to do the same thing over here i'm going to go around each of the four with my purpley fun color i made up Oh, 
Oh, these will be great. Please send in your work and it can be up on the gallery page. It's fun to go visit there and see what other people have created through these lessons. All right, and we have all ages represented there. It's really fun, all abilities. Okay, now what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna use some of that purple and cast a shadow from the stem itself. So we're gonna get some more over here, some more purple. So the stem is casting a shadow onto the cactus. Remember Mr. Sun, he's over here, he's over here. So my shadow is gonna be over here. The thistle is away from my cactus. So I'm gonna make sure that my line is away from the stem. I'm not putting it right next to the stem. Makes okay. all the difference, just adding those extra lines. You would have never thought. How fun is this painting together on a, on a Saturday morning? It's too hot to do anything else right this second. You didn't go out at like 6 a.m. This is a good time to do it. So come, this was our last Saturday morning though together, you guys, because I know that everybody will be out enjoying the weather at this time. So from now on, we'll just be doing Thursday nights and Tuesdays at 11, kind of breaks up your work week or your school week. If you can chime in and take an hour to paint with me on a Tuesday at 11. So this is our last Saturday together because everybody's back in school and just the weather's going to get nice. So you're going to want to just go do other stuff rather than paint with me. Um, okay, so I have the shadows going on. I have, oh, I want to put some shadow inside. This is the last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to put some shadow inside the thistles themselves. So I want to make up a red violet. So I'm going to use that same blue and red, but more red than blue to make a red violet. I know my palette's getting really gross at this point, but that looks, that's what my wood palette looks like too when I'm painting. Okay, so I'm just going to put in a few, barely just touching it inside my thistles. Just some little strokes or dashes or dots to give it some shadow inside there. Give it some more dimension. Yay. Last but not least, I'm going to give the thistles a little bit of white tips where the sun is hitting them. Especially this guy, he looks too pink. Yay! And then don't forget to sign your work. Always want to sign your work. I make sure that I sign my work inside the canvas. So if you were to frame this, it would come in about oh a half inch. You want to make sure that your name is in the in the frame inside the frame. I guess I could use red since I have a lot of red on my on my plate left. And voila, you have a painting. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I could come back and add, uh, this one has a lot more yellow, so I could put a little bit more yellow in there, um, you know, as it's drying up and you can add more little, like this one, I've got a little few little white dabs going on in there. So, I mean, you could add more stuff. But you have to know when to stop. So less is more, you kind of got to know when is enough to do that. 
So that is your saguaro for the day. Let me talk to you about um, how you can get your supplies. So if you decide that you want to continue on September 10th, but you ran out of canvases like I did today and I had to um, paint over something, you could go to an Etsy site that will be linked in an email from the city. You need to do this before you register for the class, of course, well in advance. Um, but inside a cute little bag, da -da -da, you will get a canvas if we're doing canvas work. If we're doing watercolor, then you're going to get a piece of watercolor paper, right? Because the Tuesday morning, some of those are do watercolor on those. Um, so you'll get a canvas and, oh, well, you'll get a little welcome sheet too. That's always fun. I don't know. Maybe you could use that as a scrap sheet. And then you'll get um, little cups of paint. You'll get the primaries plus the white, right? Unless I need something special in there for you. And you'll get two brushes. You'll get a hog's hair and a round brush that's necessary. So basically you'll have your little supplies all ready to go. And that will be um, $25. And you gotta go pick it up. Um, pay the extra for shipping it to your house. So that's just an option for you guys um, going forward. And if it's watercolor, of course, it will be the sheet of watercolor paper and you'll get your watercolor set for that. And your brushes, pretty easy peasy, huh? I know, we're just, as we get, as we do more of these, we realize we get feedback from you guys, what all you need to be able to go forward. And some of you are not able to get to the big box stores Maybe it's the middle of the day. You're like, oh, I really want to do this class, but I don't have my stuff, right? Um, so if you think of it ahead of time, then you've got it. And then you're ready to go come to that Tuesday morning or that Thursday evening. So the next one, Thursday evening. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So if you chime back in September 10th, we're going to do um, colorful mums. I mean, mums for me, M U. MS uh, represents, you know, the, I don't know, back to school. I know there's probably not going to be a lot of football games going on in person, but um, I think about all the colors and we're going to, we're going to talk about all the rainbow of colors. So you will be working on this. You could turn it landscape or portrait any which way you want, but we're going to do it Van Gogh style. He happens to be one of my favorite artists. So we're going to make him look whimsy and blowing because we're hoping those cool winds are going to blow in really soon. So um, I'm hoping you can join us for that on September 10th. And if you need supplies, let me know, right? Um, then on the 22nd, it's going to be a Tuesday at 11 o'clock. I'm trying to think, did I, did I get the date right? I think that's the right date. And um, we are going to be working on uh, a sunflower using watercolors. So that's kind of, so it'll be flower month. We'll just do the flower month. And then we'll switch to some animals um, in the fall. And then November, we'll even do a still life at the table. So I have a lot of uh, things up my sleeve and paint on my hands. And uh, we're having fun doing stuff. So with that, I'm gonna let you show me your work. So what you can do is um, have your, uh, Rosie will let, let you chime in if you wanna say something or talk to me, you can turn your sound on and show me what you have. Oh my gosh, 